Hi, this is Crime and Partner, and welcome back to Let's Play Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Now, when I last left off, I was actually in the process of showing you uh, one of the extra areas that I could uh, go to now because of the Leapstone. Well, now that I've showed you that, I'm going to go ahead and move on with the game. So, I'm actually going to go to the very middle of the map, uh, the Clock Tower, if you will, if you remember, that's where we met Maria. Um, anyway, because it is a bit of a run, I'm going to go ahead and make the run off screen and I'll meet you there. And we're back. Um, as you can see, I actually made a point of grabbing the, the stopwatch as well. And, and here's the reason why. This room's very interesting. If you use the stopwatch, you'll notice that that left statue moved out of the way. Now, this is only during the duration of the stopwatch, but it gives me a chance to uh, you know, get a heart max up and get a couple of items. Now, you may be thinking... Oh my gosh, you just got that Alucard equipment that I was uh, beating people up with early in the game. Well, it's not exactly true. You may have noticed it said Alucard. Um, this armor has horrible stats in terms of defense and damage. But oddly enough, if you wear the whole set, you'll actually get a luck bonus. And as I mentioned, luck is really key just for getting rare items. So, something to keep in mind. Now this left statue here, um, what will happen is every minute or... Um, it'll open and then the next minute it'll close and it goes back and forth until the time runs out on your game uh, when the time runs out it stays closed um, it, it basically becomes uh, one way you can only uh, come out you can't go in anyway moving on we are now in Ulrox's quarters I just want to kill him once for uh, the best Jerry. Well, try to. You may have noticed earlier at the librarian, every monster that you killed, he keeps a record of. So I like to have it. Um, yeah, obviously breakable wall. And we got a broadsword, which is weaker than the jewel so, uh, knuckles, two-handed also the boot. Um, Onyx is, you know, yet another gem that you can sell, and, well, cheese is cheese. Alright, we're gonna go up here for a moment, but I, I, I plan on actually uh, going to the left. But You'll notice here's another one of those uh, weird armored knight brothers. Wow, he went down a lot easier than he did the past times I've gone by him. You'll notice here, there is no way right now for me to get up that big, huge passage. But, you know, maybe we can come back later. So, just something to keep in mind. The reason I came here, though, is there's a teleporter room. Uh, just by going in the room now, I've uh, opened up the ability to teleport to there later. Which is going to be uh, very nice when I need to really get around the castle to help me save time. Alright, so we're going to move left now as I had originally planned. And we enter the Colosseum. We're actually going to go down here a moment. And it's those uh, hunting girls. Well, well, great. Let me let me jump over her. There we go. Well, I wasn't so lucky. There we go. Okay. That wasn't too bad. Now, you'll notice here we find the blood cloak. This is very nice. Now, this doesn't have the constitution bonus that the Crystal Cloak does, but you'll notice if you read that description, converts damage into hearts. 
Now whenever I take damage, um, I'm gonna gain some hearts which will help me to fuel up my uh, sub-weapons attacks. Alright, now while I'm at it, you see that big huge uh, golden skeleton? He's called a Paranthropos. Um, something interesting about him is he drops the um, rarest ring in the game, but there's a catch to it. In order for him to drop the rarest ring and most powerful in the game, you have to have beaten it and have a clear save file. Um, in my case, he's only going to uh, he's only going to drop Aquamarines instead. You have to beat it, um, and he'll give you a ring called the Ring of Varda, which is a huge increase to all your stats, ridiculously overpowered. You'll notice here too in the background that big, huge uh, dead ram. Uh, actually, I think that comes from Brondo of Blood, so just kind of allude to that. You know, as in this room, uh, you have access to like pretty much every single uh, sub weapon. Now, I want to go back to Holy Water. Moving in here. I'm not quite ready to save yet, but I did want to refill my health. You'll notice here is another iron grate, but yet there's a relic on the other side. Well, th this is now the second time that we found a place where we need mist to uh, go through. You know, the first time it didn't matter so much because we used that whole little elevator trick uh, to get to the other side anyway. And right over here we will find a library ticket. If you remember, the library ticket, um, if you equip it, It'll take you to the librarian. <laughs> Who are you? Open Hell's Gate. Come forth, my servants. <laughs> All right. We're going to have to fight both the werewolf and the minotaur at the same time. They're a bit of a tag team. All right, Minotaur down. And the werewolf's dead. I'm certain that was a Belmont. So he says he's the lord of this castle. You know, hey, hey, what can you say? There's probably uh, better benefits, uh... Joining Dracula's team than there is uh, being a self-employed vampire hunter. <laughs> anyway, we hit the switch, and now we can use the elevator upward. And we get the form of mist. We can actually go through these uh, gratings now. Now, it only lasts a, just a quick second, but it's just enough to get through. you also notice that it took a huge chunk of my uh, magic power when it did it. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and stop here and save. Uh, when I come back, we'll go ahead and continue exploring the Colosseum and see what's left to find. Anyway, this is Crime and Partner. Uh, thanks for watching, really. Um, see you next crime.